banish your excuses. People use excuses to postpone taking action. Excuses, on one hand, are our subconscious protecting us from danger, real or imagined. It's your automatic pilot saying, danger, this might not go well. Let me save you the embarrassment, failure, and rejection. They're how we rationalize our way through tough situations. But on the other hand, most excuses are poppycock, invalid, rubbish, and rationalized. There's no other way to put it. And for the purposes of this book, I wish to be extremely black and white about this. Almost all of your excuses are lies, either intentional lies or unconscious defense mechanisms. They just enable you to do what you want to do and feel justified about it. This is something I feel strongly about because even though life is tough and the world throws curveballs at all of us, so what? You still have to do what you have to do regardless. Just because someone else lacks the obstacles you have doesn't excuse you from taking action. This isn't meant to sound insensitive, but is simply an acknowledgement that the world does not care about excuses, so you should wean yourself off them. Now that I'm off my soapbox, let's look at some common excuses people use to remain out of action. Three in particular plague us. Now is not the right time. Related variations. I can't do X until... I can't do X unless... Well, that might be true, but there's never a perfect time for anything. There are mediocre times and terrible times, but rarely are there perfect times. Stop putting conditions around your ability to act. All you're doing is creating a psychological gatekeeper for yourself. Timing is everything. That's actually not true. Timing just is. There is no good time for a crisis, but they happen anyway. When trying to be productive, rarely is there an obvious moment that's better than another. It's just a lie we tell ourselves. There are always going to be obstacles to overcome and hassles to manage. In fact, 99% of the time you want to do something, the timing will be mediocre. 1%, the timing will be truly terrible, and that's it. There should never be any expectations of having perfect timing. When is the right time to travel? When's the right time to get married? When's the right time to have a child? When is the right time to quit a job, goal, or marriage? You know the answer to these questions. There may be truly terrible times, but there exists no perfect time to upend your life in small or large ways. For instance, there is never an ideal time to sell a house. The housing market is unpredictable, and various rates are subject to change overnight. You also don't know what bids you'll receive, and if anyone will even view your home. On the other hand, there are some objectively horrible times to sell a house, like when a main employer in town lays off 50% of its workforce, and interest rates take a 10% rise. Many of us wish timing was something we had more control over. But the fact remains that we rarely get to choose when something happens to us. We do, however, get to decide when we take action. If you find yourself questioning this, the time to act has already arrived. I don't know where to start. You do. The problem is you think you need an entire plan before starting. You need to stop expecting to clearly see a path through to the end before you even begin. In reality, you just need to identify the first one or two steps. Everything else comes afterward and may even change drastically from what you first imagined. It's the mindset of building a staircase step by step as you're climbing it, as opposed to constructing it completely before you ever take a single step. Here is the secret. You don't need to know where you will finish to identify where to start. The number one college major for students entering university in the US is undecided. Most 18-year-olds are not able to articulate what they want to study that will lead to a lifelong career. However, we encourage young people to get to college soon after high school. Don't wait too long. Don't amass too many responsibilities, we say. During the four or five years there on campus, most students declare a major and start working toward a degree that will eventually lead to employment. We think nothing of this process. However, so many times in adulthood, people become paralyzed because they don't see a clear finish line. 
Doing something right away with what you have today is the key. Stop researching, stop agonizing, stop wasting time, and start doing. Do what you can do right now at this very moment, and you can figure out the next move after. You probably know your next steps, however small they may be. You don't know the end point, but you absolutely know where to start. If you set out on a road trip, do you need to know your absolute end destination with a degree of certainty? It helps, but no, you just need to know enough to get you through the first hour or two of driving, and then you can stop along the way and figure it out. What's important is that you began your trip instead of endlessly planning. The blank page or the blank screen is the writer's nightmare. It doesn't matter if the writer is a middle schooler with a book report due or Stephen King. The blank page is terrifying. And yet, all who eventually produced something to fill that paper or screen had to stop reading the book, stop researching the topic, stop planning out the flow, and just start writing. The first words written may not be any good. They may be terrible and need to be changed. But the writer cannot get there if they never write any words down. The first step. Focusing on the end product, a hardback with a glossy cover, isn't the goal at the beginning. A beginning is the goal. After you start, the rest will take care of itself because you will know what needs to be done to get you to the next step and then the one after that. I'm not good enough. Shockingly, that just might be true. A person may really want to do something, but they might not be good enough. What's the answer to that dilemma? You can become good enough. Sometimes the only way to get what you want is to shift into a growth mindset and start working. Make sure that this time next year, you know more than you do now and that your skills are better than they are currently. If you're willing to take the first steps, what you need will follow. When you feel like you're not good enough, you might need to reframe it just a bit to, I'm not good enough at this moment. After all, why would anyone have the expectation that they would be good enough at something without practice, work, and a significant amount of time? You simply cannot have the expectation of instant or even preemptive excellence. If you never start, you'll never be good enough, and you'll have prophesized your own failure. You have to lower your expectations and realize that you probably won't be good enough at first, and it might take you a while. But if you never start, there's a 0% chance you'll reach adequacy. There's a reason one of the most widespread conceptions of expertise is the 10,000-hour rule, first put forth by Anders Ericsson and then popularized by Malcolm Gladwell, which states that you need 10,000 hours of focused practice to become an expert in any field or skill. Learning a musical instrument is an illustrative example. When people say they aren't musical before picking up an instrument, it makes little sense, doesn't it? If learning to play the piano is your goal, then you can certainly make it happen. You would have to start back at that beginning middle C. But with lessons, practice, patience, and perseverance, anyone, including you, can learn to play the piano. Who knows? Perhaps you could eventually become a keyboard player for a Queen cover band. Not just because you're not good enough now does not mean you cannot become proficient eventually. Your lofty expectations shouldn't hold you back from action. Combating excuses is difficult because of our overwhelming need for self-protection. Sometimes we even resort to lying to ourselves. We may not even realize when we're using defense mechanisms to avoid action, but chances are, if you find yourself justifying a lack of motion, you're using an excuse and almost all excuses are lies. Take rapid action. Get productive, motivated, and energized. Stop overthinking and procrastinating. Written by Patrick King. Narrated by Russell Newton.